An attack on me is an attack on science itself. You believe me, don't you? I was teaching my son about the Civil War, and one of the causes of it that no one teaches you about is the way in which mass immigration destabilized the Republic. In a lecture, Professor Gary W. Gallagher said the following. The North was increasing far more rapidly in population during the antebellum decades than was the South. There was more immigration by far. The South was losing ground in population uh, and thus clout in Congress. The South was aware of the fact, obviously, that the North was outstripping it in population. Uh, the House of Representatives, uh, clearly dominated by the North well before the Civil War because, as you know, that representation based on population there. Uh, the Senate uh, was something the South tried to, to maintain parity, and we'll talk about more about, uh, more about that in just a minute. So basically, in a closed system, a republic works. Alter this and make it an open system, and sudden population surges mess up the balance. Like how Aristotle mentioned Phalus of Chalcedon, and how he promised to all of his citizens that he'd give them equal land. As history's first socialist, his plans were thrown into confusion due to population growth. Aristotle writes, Phalius the Chalcedonian first proposed that the fortunes of the citizens should be equal, which he thought was not difficult to accomplish when a community was first settled, but that it was a work of greater difficulty and one that had been long established. Aristotle then goes on to say that Phalius didn't count on population growth. When that happened, he found himself waging war on neighboring city-states to give land to his own new citizens. A city-state that found itself constantly at war eventually went bankrupt and collapsed. So herein, we see how an increase in population, in an open system, caused stress cracks to appear in the design of the society. And as I already alluded to, this was true in the lead-up to the Civil War. By the North getting more people, they got more representation in Congress. They then started to abuse that power by taxing their own people at 15%, while taxing Southerners to the tune of 85% on manufactured goods. The South rightly said that this wasn't fair, whereupon the Northerners said, that's how democracy works. But as we have so often pointed out, a democracy is the corrupt form of a republic. We were designed to be a republic, not a democracy. Ben Franklin famously said, democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. In a republic, minority rights are protected. In a democracy, only mob rule holds sway. And this is what happened in the lead up to the Civil War. Population increases brought on by mass migration allowed the North to acquire unearned political power, which they then used to rob other regions of the country. Here's the thing. These techniques are still being used today, as James Woods pointed out recently in a tweet. 14 million immigrants since 2006. That's 14 million living off the system. The Democrats promote this invasion in the hopes that just 10% will vote illegally. 10% will swing any election. Just look at California, and make no mistake, this is an invasion. So what you basically have are political parties sabotaging the posterity of the country and its long-term health for short-term gains. This is why George Washington begged us not to carry over the custom of political parties from England. He warned that if we did so, they'd immediately corrupt our constitution and change the incentive structures. And he was right. Political parties are not in our constitution. We brought them over as a cultural force of habit from England. George Washington said, However political parties may now and then answer popular ends, they are likely in the course of time and things to become potent engines by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engines which have lifted them to unjust dominion. Long story short, bringing in ringers through mass migration to tip the balance of power in your favor is throwing our system into oscillations. Oscillations just as serious as those that culminated in the First Civil War in 1860. Actions have consequences. As Albert Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. If you're looking for another great show to learn from, consider the new American show on the Second Amendment, Two Way for Today, hosted by filmmaker Zoe Warren, as he explores the Second Amendment and explains with expert guests and insightful analysis the continuing central importance of the Second Amendment today. Check it out on thenewamerican.com. Thank <laughs> you.